Happy Sabbath, uh, wherever you are tuned in and wherever you are watching this uh, late night presentation by Gospel Sounders, the Kindling Reformation Ministry. Uh, this is Sammy Wilberforce, and uh, I'm glad that uh, the Lord has given us his Sabbath. We may rejoice in it, we may be glad in it, we may be able to commune one to another. And uh, this uh, late night presentation, uh, I'm going to look at uh, the Christian obligation to the earthly government, the Christian obligation to the earthly government. And so I'd like us to have a word of prayer and then uh, be able to learn together. Dear Lord in heaven, thank you for forgiving us our sins. Thank you for, Lord, not imputing on myself iniquity, but imputing your righteousness upon my soul. And so I pray that, Lord, we may live soberly and righteous in this time, being guided by thy Holy Spirit. And as we look at this issue of obligation to the earthly government, Lord, I pray that I may present your word in clearness, that uh, it may be your word, not my words. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Uh, I like to say that uh, we are living in an era where many things are happening. And uh, sometimes we can ask ourselves as Christian, what our, are our obligation, what are our responsibilities upon uh, on the governments of this earth? Seeing that uh, in various texts of the Bible, God has said that he has ordained the powers that be. Although we also know that um, Christ was on this earth and he did not interfere with the government that was in his time. Rather, he did his business and uh, went back to his father. And so what are some of the obligations we have for uh, these um, earthly governments as uh, we live in this world? And so whether or not a Christian should obey the government is becoming a more relevant question these days. Uh, with increased government overreach and control, it is a good time maybe we examine the Bible. What does it say about uh, how we should uh, respond to the government, what should we do and uh, under various circumstances, how should we react and respond? And uh, we understand that the Bible says that we should obey the government as long as those in authority are not violating the laws of God. And if the government passes laws that are opposed to God's law, we are not required by God to obey them. Uh, and also, the Bible makes it clear that Christians should obey the laws of the land as long as those laws don't violate the law of God, which is higher. God, at the end of the day, is the ultimate authority. He should be obeyed at all costs. And uh, we, shall go in, we, sh we shall be looking at those texts that uh, speak of this. In the book of uh, Titus, in the book of Titus, Chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. Titus, chapter 3, verses uh, 1 and 2. We read that, uh, remind the believers to submit to the government and its officers. They should be obedient, always ready to do what is good. They must not slander anyone and must avoid quarreling. Instead, they should be gentle and show true humility to everyone. And that is one of the obligations that we are told in Titus chapter 3, verses 1 to 2. Rulers of the land are supposed to be a terror to evil and praise those who do good. When we obey authorities in what is right, we actually honor God. But when in those in authority become workers of evil, we are not supposed to submit to their ways that are contrary to God. And uh, rulers of the land are supposed to punish evildoers, not to empower them. And so when they reach at a time they promote iniquity, we can understand that they are sta not standing in the 
good position with the high authority which comes from God himself. Also, when rulers uh, and those in authority agree with and uphold the laws of God, they become ministers of God and are instructed to obey them. We are instructed to obey them, showing that our conduct is, conduct is upright and honorable. A Christian should not suffer because of their bad behavior, but should be in subjection to the godly laws of the land that are in place to hold back the evil. Um, we are told in Proverbs that uh, righteousness exalts a nation, but uh, sin is a reproach to many people. And so when a government has a righteous leaders, they make righteous laws that keep things in order. And uh, crimes are punished. Those who do wrong to their neighbor suffer the consequences. These types of laws are in line with God's word and should be followed by Christians. And uh, that is what Proverbs chapter 14, verse 34 says, that uh, righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. When uh, you find that uh, the government, which should be protecting people from crime and uh, uh, those who are uh, against the higher powers, you find that the same governments are the ones promoting that which is evil. And so a nation is uh, uh, determined by her laws. Not only does the Bible tell us when to obey the government, but the word of God also commands us to honor and pray for our leaders. And uh, you will find that uh, in, uh, let me see, in the book of uh, First Peter, First Peter chapter two verses thirteen to seventeen. First Peter chapter two verses thirteen to seventeen. I I'd like us to see this. I'd like us to see this. Uh, in First Peter chapter two verses thirteen to seventeen. We are told, for the Lord's sake, submit to all human authority, whether the king as head of state or the official he has appointed. For the king has sent them to punish those who do wrong and to honor those who do right. It is God's will that your honorable lives should silence those ignorant people who make foolish accusations against you. For you are free, yet you are God's, God's slave. So don't use your freedom as an excuse to do evil. Respect everyone and love the family of believers. Fear God and respect the king. Romans chapter 13, verses 1 and 2, you are told everyone must submit to the governing authorities. For all authority comes from God, and those in positions of authority have been placed there by God. So anyone who rebels against authority is rebelling against what God has instituted, and they will be punished. Uh, in verses uh, in verses uh, thirteen, in verses three to seven of Romans chapter thirteen, for rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. And uh, for he is the minister of God to be for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid for he beareth no uh, sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore he must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. For because of this, you also pay taxes, for they are God's ministers attending continually to this very thing. Render therefore to all their due, render therefore to all their due, taxes to whom taxes are due, customs to whom customs, fear to whom fear, honor to whom uh, honor. And uh, that is God instructing those who say they are in Christ and they are said that uh, they have to consider these things. What does the Bible say about obeying uh, unjust laws then? What does the Bible say about uh, obeying unjust laws? Uh, there are certain times when civil disobedience is called for. When obeying a law of the land will cause you to disobey God's law, then you must make the choice to obey God rather than man. An example 
of this in the Bible is found in Acts chapter 4 and Acts chapter 5. Peter and John were threatened and commanded by those in authority not to preach the name of Jesus. And so we read in the book of Acts chapter 4, verses 17 to 20. Acts chapter 4, verses 17 to 20. But so that it spreads no further among the people, let us severely threaten them, the law said. The people in the authority said that from now on they speak no more no, to no man in this name. So they called them and commanded them not to speak at all nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said to them, whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than to God, ye judge. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. Acts chapter 4, verses 17 and 20. Uh, Peter and John chose to obey God rather than man. They made a decision to disobey the law of the land in order to obey God. Any man-made law that requires us to disobey our God should be civilly disobeyed. And uh, again, in the book of um, Acts chapter 5, Peter and the other apostles declared that it was right to obey God rather than uh, uh, or over man. In Acts chapter 5, verses uh, 27 to 29, and when they had brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, saying, Did we not strictly command you not to teach in this name? And look, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, and intend to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter and the other apostle answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. And so a Christian has an obligation to preach the word of God. And when the government starts interfering with that, then uh, it is a time that uh, we should take our plea with God and not uh, uh, trust the government at all. In Hebrews chapter 10, the Bible commands Christians to not forsake the assembling of selves together. Uh, we read in Hebrews 10, 25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as in the man of some, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. And this is a command from God through his written word. If the government creates a law forbidding the church from assembling ourselves together, then we must make the decision to obey God rather than man. There are some times when there have, there have been issues to do with health, and maybe the areas we are coming in, they are uh, uh, affected with this. We don't have to disobey the government unnecessarily. There were times when guarantine was done, even in the Bible, where somebody was secluded from others so that there shall not be a spreading of a disease. And so when there is an outbreak of disease and the government forbids large assemblies being together because uh, uh, it may be able to spread, like uh, you find that somebody had leprosy and they were really secluded from the camp. We can have a situation where there is like an outbreak of cholera, Ebola, some things that are happening around Kenya, as you see in the secondary schools, and uh, people start losing their lives. It will be presumptuous to say that, uh, you know, we shall just go and assemble, we shall just go and meet, God will protect us. No, God is not a God of presumptuousness. If he were able to tell the priest to separate those who had Ebola, uh, it will be lack of wisdom for a very contagious disease to break. And then people say, they read one text of Hebrews 10, 25, and they, they argue, it's a must that we, may, we, we must meet. We are not going to obey the government, no. Remember, the leprous was also secluded. But when the government just wakes up on one day and without any alarm, and some false information, they decide that all churches in the land are closed, no meeting houses, no two people, three people being together, they are praising God. It's a time that uh, we must uh, stand with our God. If the government creates laws that will hinder us from loving our neighbor or from healing the sick or from any other command of God, we must be bold enough to obey God rather than man despite the consequences. This requires great boldness and commitment to honor God no matter what. Um, there's something also in the book of 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 18 to 21, which uh, I'd like us to read together. And uh, I pray that the Lord will continue blessing us. As we live in this world, we should live like uh, uh, ships among 
uh, walls be as wise as serpents and as calm as doves. Whatever it behooves us to do, let us do so that uh, we may be on the side of the Lord. You who are slaves, you who are slaves must accept the authority of your masters with all respect. Do what they tell you, not only if they are kind and reasonable, but even if they are cruel. For God is pleased with you when you do what you know is right and patiently endure unfair treatment. And uh, of course, you get no credit for being patient if you are beaten for doing wrong. But if you suffer for doing good and endure it patiently, God is pleased with you. For God called you to do good, even if it means suffering. Uh, just as Christ suffered for you, he is your example and you must follow in his steps. If uh, our suffering will is going to produce um, a character that uh, will influence others to think about Christ, then uh, we are compelled to, under such a, such a circumstance, to uh, be patient in our suffering. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 5 to 6. Slaves, obey your earthly masters with deep respect and fear. Serve them sincerely as you will serve Christ. Try to please them all the time, not just when they are watching you. As slaves of Christ, do the will of God with all your heart. And there must be a careful balancing of this. If you are asked to do something that uh, will violate the revealed truth about God, you are to obey God. But when it is in circumstances where not the law of God is violated, but uh, your patience is being tried, we are being told, be patient, for the Lord is seeking to establish your heart. Even the angels do not speak evil of dignitaries. Dignitaries, As a follower of Christ, there should never be an instant where we speak evil of our leaders. In fact, we are commanded to speak evil of no one. Of course, there are going to be leaders that we don't agree with, but we are told to pray for them. The book of uh, 1 Timothy, or 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 to 4, it says, Therefore, exhort first of all that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. 1 Timothy 2, 1 to 4. And so instead of um, uh, bringing a railing accusation against these people, we are told that uh, the, our prayers should be directed to God for their well-being. As believers, we must uh, do what is pleasing to the Lord. We must continue to respect and obey authority. We must not only obey when we agree with things, Though sometimes it may seem uh, hard, we must obey when things seem unfair. Be a good example for others and even through hard times, serve the Lord with all your heart by submitting to authority. Remember that we are to be the light of the world and there is no power except that which God has allowed. And so um, let us go through some famous quotes uh, on Christian quotes about uh, authority and how we should relate with them. Uh, look at uh, some some of these quotes. They are they are interesting to look at. Uh, George Washington says, "Government is not." mere advice. It is authority with power to enforce it is laws. Christian quotes about authority. C.S. Lewis says, authority exercised with humility and obedience accepted with delight are the very lines along which our spirits live. Also, John Stott, the authority by which the Christian leader leads is not power but love, not force but example, not co coercion but reason persuasion. Leaders have power, but power is safe only in the hands of those who humble themselves to serve. So these are Christian quotes about authority and uh, some of these virtues we can see in government leaders, civil leaders, and uh, we should be able to recognize them because uh, they place them on a ground that we can be able to meet and be able to dialogue. Uh, Charles Hodge, uh, our first remark on this subject is that the ministry 
is an office and not merely a work. Our second remark is that the office is of divine appointment, not merely in the sense in which the civil powers are ordained of God, but in the, se in the sense that ministers derive the authority from Christ and not from the people, Charles Hodge. And then William Wilberforce, Sir William Wilberforce, men of authority and influence may promote good morals. Let them in their several stations encourage virtue. Let them favor and take part in any plans which may be formed for the advancement of uh, morality. Advancement, listen to the word, it is advancement, not the forcing of uh, authority or of uh, morals. When they force morals, then uh, they enter into a jurisdiction which is not uh, theirs. And uh, continued on, continued on, we are told by Di Dietrich uh, Bonhoeffer, or Bonhoeffer, ultimately all authority on earth must serve only the authority of Jesus Christ over humankind. John Stott again, his authority on earth allows us to dare to go to all the nations. His authority in heaven gives us our only hope of success and his presence with us leaves us with no other choice. What a wonderful quote. And then uh, we have Adrian Rogers. Kingdom authority is the God-given mandate of Christians to exercise control over the world in the name of Jesus under his oversight. And then Albert Mohler, Authentic Christian preaching carries a note of authority and a demand for decision not found elsewhere in the society. That is Christian obligation to the government, and we are looking at Christian quotes on authority. Uh, Ijiwat has also something to say on this. She says this. Uh, this is uh, what uh, Ijiwat has to say on this. Uh, in letter 5, 1883, pages 1 and 4, the world is becoming more and more lawless. The churches are united in their efforts to restrict religious liberty. What are we as a people doing in this crisis? Are we purifying our souls by obedience to Christ's words? Are we humbling our hearts before God and confessing our sins? Are we seeking with earnestness and contrition of soul him who is the source of our strength? Are we claiming the promises, believing that Jesus pardons our transgressions and forgives our sins? Are we educating ourselves to overcome all temptation to murmur and complain? Ever we need to manifest kindness and true courtesy. We may have to plead most earnestly before legislative councils for the right to exercise independent judgment to worship God according to the dictates of our conscience. Thus, in his provident, God has designed that the claims of his holy law shall be brought before men in the highest authority. But uh, as we do all we can as men and women who are not ignorant of Satan's devices, we are to manifest no bitterness of feeling. Constantly, we are to offer prayer for divine aid. It is God alone who can hold the four winds until the angels shall seal the servants of God in their foreheads. Uh, another interesting thing is this. I have been shown that from the first rebellion, Satan was working to this end to exalt his own power in contradiction to God's law and God's power. He does this in exalting Sunday observance and anything that shall by these people go forth as their voice to respect the idol Sabbath will, will it not dishonor God and confuse minds and place them where they will be deceived by Satan's devices? Anything we may do that lifts up the superiors to take the place of the true and genuine Sabbath is disloyal to God and we must move very carefully, lest we exalt the decisions of the man of sin. We are not to be found in neutral position on this matter of so great consequences. The commandments of, God's, of God and the faith of Jesus must be from conviction of duty inscribed on our banners. Manuscript 6, 1889, page 12. That when the government conflicts with the Sabbath observance, 
it is a time that we lifted our voice to God and uh, uh, let our allegiance be on the side of God rather than be on the side of man. The persecution of two of our brethren of one of the neighboring churches and the sentence requiring them to pay a fine or be placed in the stocks has created such indignation in the public mind that people are ready to hear and uh, are calling for the reasons of our faith. This persecution has resulted for the truth rather than against it. Our brethren refused to pay the fine and the alternative was the stocks, but the authorities have no such instruments of torture. They forced one brother to pay the fine by seizing upon his horse and cart, leaving him with no chance to get home. So he had to hand over the money. The other brother has no property they can attach and refuses to pay the fine. So here the matter stands. Sometimes they can't, this is daylight robbery, by the way, taking somebody's property unrighteously is daylight robbery. But when it comes to that, we don't have to resist the law. Let them take everything they want and go with it. And another brother who could not pay that, he was arrested and stayed in a prison. And so we cannot fight such a people because we know that uh, these are cruel monsters sometimes. That is from letter 40b. The commandment, the commandment keeping people of God will ere long be placed in a most trying position. But uh, all those who have walked in the light and have diffused the light will realize that God interposes in their behalf. When everything looks most forbidding, then the Lord will reveal his power to his faithful ones. When the nation for which God has worked in such a marvelous manner and over which he has spread the shield of omnipotence, abandons protestant, protestant principles, and through it is legislative gifts, countenance, and support to Romanism in limiting religious liberty, then God will work in his own power for his people are true. The tyranny of Rome will be exercised, but Christ is our refuge. Letter 61, 1895, pages 11 and 12. And so our, our work is not to fight these people. Our work is to exalt Christ, and uh, he'll be able to do what he has promised he will do. Another one, you will say you must have your holidays just the same as other people. You can say these holidays are appointed to you. Men have a right to spend their time as they please. Light was given to me when they were hunting for the school. At first, I thought it must be by the cities, but again, the cloud was rolled back and it was shown how our cities were and what they would be. And the whole was presented to me that we should get a proper distance from the city, that we should have nature around us and establish our school there so that the students will not be bound about with holidays and or they might feel disloyal if they do not have their holidays. And so this is uh, someone in talks, volume two, page 127, paragraph two. You find that uh, the government has um, instituted her own laws and uh, or her holidays and uh, Every person in the vicinity must be able to keep those holidays. While you may say that uh, we want to do evangelism, the government will not realize that. And so one of the things that you should do to avoid conflict with the government is then to move to areas where actually such a laws do not get enforced so much. Uh, uh, there's another report that uh, was given and uh, I'd like us to look at it also so that uh, we may be blessed together. We are looking at uh, the Christian obligation to the earthly government. What shall we do when we are brought into great straits with these people? Then with the regard to the Sunday question, I read in the paper of one man who was one hour late closing his store and he had to pay a fine for it. This was some Sunday law. Now, how does God look upon it? Why? We have got to act as men and women that have minds and souls and that are under obedience to God. Now, if they should come here and say you must close up your work and your presses on Sunday, I will not say to you to keep your presses going because the conflict does not come between you and your God. When they go a little further and say you must keep Sunday and you shall not observe Saturday, then everyone that look the, then everyone that took the position will have the mark of the beast and we are not to obey them. Someone in talks, volume two, page 127, paragraph three. So they, if they tell you, close your business 
on Sunday, do that. But if now they come, they go further and say, you must worship on Sunday, then here is where God has to interpose. Either you go to prison or he works away, or if you are burnt at stake, so be it. Uh, they can only kill this body, but they cannot kill the body and the soul. If the authorities should say, don't carry work on here on Sunday, and we know that, and we know what they will do, there is plenty you can do. You can go on mission work and make that day uh, in which you will see what you can accomplish in the work of drawing souls to Jesus Christ. For God does not want us to gratify the devil by defying the powers. You know, when Peter asked Christ about paying tribute, he said, are not all the children free? But said he, lest he should offend them. Do you go down to the sea and the first fish you take up, open it his mouth and uh, do you take the piece of money and do you pay for yourself, Peter, and for me? Then uh, there are other things that uh, they may draw the line on, but we are not ready for the line to be drawn here in regard to the Sunday law. You just go to work, every one of you can disappoint the devil and see how much you can do, how many souls you can bring into the truth. Someone in Talks, volume 2, page 127, paragraph 5. It's uh, uh, a chapter which uh, actually advises us on what we should do. Now, look at this. Again, in Spalding and Magan, page 25, paragraph 6. Spalding and Magan, page 25, paragraph 6. Question. Is it wrong for our brethren to work out their fines? The next paragraph answers it. Christ, the King of glory, carried the cross upon which he was about to be crucified. The people had not the slightest semblance of right to inflict this upon him, but he did not refuse to submit. Christ suffered and died for us. Shall we refuse to be partake of his sufferings? Let the servants pay tribute as the master did, lest others be offended. And then, we find her saying, when uh, brought before the courts, we are to give up our rights unless by so doing we are brought into collision with God. We are, not to, we are not pleading for our right, but for God's right to our service. Instead of resisting the penalties imposed unjustly upon us, it, is, it will be better to take heed to the Savior's word when they persecute you in this city, flee ye into another. For verily, I say, and I say, Unto you, you shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man become. Why spend your time in prison for a fine you can pay and then go your way? We are not talking about bribes, bribing the authority. We are talking when you are arraigned in court and they unjustly ask of you a fine, not a bribe. Pay it and go to another city. Don't stay in the same city. Testimonies to the Church, Volume 6, page 394, paragraph 2. We should not work in a manner that will mark us out as seeming to advocate treason. We should weed out from our writings and utterances every expression that, taken by itself, will be so misrepresented as to make it appear antagonist, antagonistic to law and order. Everything should be carefully considered, lest we place ourselves on record as encouraging this disloyalty to our country and its laws. We are not required to defy authorities. There will, be, there will come a time when, because of our advocacy of Bible truth, we shall be treated as traitors. But let not this time be hastened by unadvised movements that stir up animosity and strife. Testimonies to the Church, Volume 6, page 394, paragraph 2. And uh, in Spalding and Magan, page 22, paragraph 3, we are told, I have given you the light which has been presented to me. If followed, it will change the course of many and will make them wise, cautious teachers. Refraining from work on Sunday is not receiving the mark of the beast, and uh, where this will advance the interest of the work, it should be done. We should not go out of our way to work on Sunday. And so, what are we to do after the Sabbath has been sacredly observed in places where the opposition is so strong as to arouse persecution if work is done on Sunday? Let our brethren make that day an occasion to do genuine missionary work. 
Let them visit the sick and the poor, ministering to their wants, and they will find favorable opportunities to open the scriptures to individuals and to families. Thus, most profitable work can be done for the master. When those who hear and see the light on the Sabbath take their stand upon the truth to keep God's holiday, difficulties will arise, for efforts will be brought to bear against them to compel men and women to transgress the law of God. Here, they must stand firm they, they, that they will not violate the law of God. And if the opposition and persecution is determinedly kept up, let them heed the words of Christ when they persecute you in one city. Flee ye into another, for verily I say unto you, you shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. And then uh, uh, something also to ponder upon, spelling and Magan, page 22, paragraph 5. The time has not yet come for us to work as though there were no prejudice. Christ said, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. If you see that by doing certain things which you have a perfect right to do, you hinder the work of the truth, refrain from doing these things or those things. Do nothing that will close the minds of others against the truth. There is a world to save and we gain nothing by cutting loose from those who we are trying to help. All things may be lawful, but all things are not expedient. We have no right to do anything that will obstruct the light which is shining from heaven. Yet, by our own course of action, we may imperil the work and close the door which God has opened for the entrance of the truth. The final issue of the Sabbath question has not yet come, and by imprudent action, we may bring on a crisis before the time. You may have all the truth, but you need not let it all flash at once upon minds, lest it become darkness to them. Even Christ said to his disciples, I have many things to say unto you, but ye cannot hear them now. We must not go into place, into a place, open a satchel, show all we have, and tell everything we know at once. Uh, we must work cautiously, presenting the truth by degrees, as the hearers can bear it and keeping close to the Lord. And uh, this is uh, one of the things that really has hindered the message. We would want to talk about everything and accuse everyone we can accuse of. And this uh, really closes the work on us very fast because people see that uh, we have not come to represent Christ and introduce Christ to the people, but what we have come is to call them names and uh, talk how posted they are and talk about things that uh, will even bring to disrepute their own uh, pastors and ministers. And so this closes the roads for us and the opportunities for us so carefully. If we counsel them not to respect the idol Sabbath exalted to take the place of the Sabbath of the Lord our God, then instruct them in this matter in a quiet and way and encourage no defying of the law powers of the law powers in words or actions are less called to do this for honor of God to vindicate his downtrodden law. Let there be no unnecessary act of arousing the combative spirit or passions of opponents. This, this does not help in any way. And um, our work, by the way, is not to combat. Our work is to entreat. That is what we forget. In every phase of truth, our work is not to try to force out things because force is the last resort of every false religion. And so, uh, as we bring this to a close, in uh, the same book, Spalding and Magan, uh, page uh, 25, paragraph one, uh, Sister Ellen White says, uh, the message of the Lord, from the light that has been given me, I see that we should fear lest rulers take their position against our work. If they do this, they will act like the enemy of all good. Every opportunity to become acquainted with these men should be embraced, but we should do nothing that will produce anything like prejudice. It means a great deal to be as wise as serpents and as harmless as doves. We have so much determination in us that often we do things unguardedly and rashly. We must appear before these men as trying to help others, working on the lines of the Christian help work. As they see the good work we do in these lines, their prejudice in a measure will be removed. 
their hearts will be open to the truth. Do not present the Sabbath abruptly. Present Christ. Should they begin to oppose you saying, oh, he is a seventh-day Adventist, lift up Christ higher and still higher. And then now, uh, while uh, we were in, uh, now this is uh, a story given of uh, how when the times were so hard and the laws were against Seventh-day Adventists, there is um, a school that was able to evade the censure of the government. Even though the officers came there, what they saw really touched their hearts. And while others were getting uh, a, a, a um, hard time to run their facilities, the Adventist facility was able to run. And so let us read this story in closing. While we were living in, at uh, Koranbong, where the Avondale School is established, that is Australia, the question of amusements came up for consideration. What shall we do to provide for the amusement of our students? The faculty inquired. We talked matters over together, and then I came before the students and said to them, we can occupy our minds and our time profitably without trying to devise methods for amusing ourselves. Instead of spending time in playing the games that so many students play, strive to do something for the master. The very best course for you to pursue is to engage in mission work for the people of the neighborhood and in the nearby settlements. Whenever you are listening to an interesting discourse, take notes and mark down the, the passages that the minister uses so that you can review the subject carefully. Then after faithful study, you will soon be able to give a synopsis of the discourses in the form of Bible readings to some who do not come to our meetings. Continued on. This is uh, from uh, Christ Triumphant. Uh, is this uh, tri Christ Triumphant or uh, uh, let me just uh, check. No. This is cancelled to parents, teachers, and students. Sorry, not Christ Triumphant. Christ Triumphant is CTR. Cancelled to teachers, to parents and teachers. And so the older students decided to follow this suggestion that was given above to do missionary work to the neighborhood and the nearby settlements, taking uh, notes of the minister's uh, discourses and be able to give Bible readings. They did that. They had evening meetings for studying the scriptures together. They worked first of all for one another, and as a result of the Bible studies among themselves, a number of the unconverted were one or one to the truth, and the effort in behalf of the neighbors was a blessing not only to themselves, but to those for whom they labored. Cancel to parents and teachers, page 550, paragraph 1, continued on. Those who went out to work for the neighbors were instructed to report any case of sickness they might find. And uh, those who had had training in giving treatment to the sick were encouraged to use their knowledge in a practical way. To work for the master came to be regarded as Christ-like recreation. Amen. After time, the Sunday labor question came up for consideration. It seemed as if the lines were soon to be drawn so tightly about us that we should not be able to work on Sunday. Our school was situated in the heart of the woods, far from any village or railway station. No one was living near enough to be disturbed in any way by anything we might do. Nevertheless, we were watched. The officers were urged to observe what we were doing on the school premises, and they did come, but they did not appear to notice those who were at work. Their confidence and respect for our people had been so won by the work we had done for the sick in that community that they did not wish to interfere with our harmless labor on Sunday. Praise the living God. Even when the devils rise and induce the governments to do things which are contrary to humanitarian uh, work, the Lord himself moves in ways that uh, we do not understand, a thousand ways which we don't understand even one. And so the officers came, they saw what they were doing on Sunday, although there was a question of Sunday labor. And they said, we do not wish to interfere with those Seventh-day Adventists. What they have done is so great, there is no need of forcing sand on them. At another time, when our brethren were threatened with persecution and were questioning in regard to what they should do, I gave the same advice that I had given in answer to the question concerning the use of Sunday for games. I said, employ Sunday in doing missionary. Uh, 
work for God. Teachers, go with your students. Take them to the homes of the people near as near and far and teach them how to walk, talk in a way to do good. Let the people know that you are interested in their soul salvation. The blessing of God rested upon the students as they diligently cite the scriptures in order to learn how to present the truth of the word in such a way that uh, this truth were received with a uh, uh, favor. Let the teachers in our school devote Sunday to missionary effort. Let them take the students with them to hold meetings for those who know not the truth. Sunday can be used for carrying forward various lines of work that will accomplish much for the Lord. On this day, house to house work can be done. Open air meetings and cottage meetings can be held. Make these meetings intensely interesting. Sing genuine revival hymns and speak with power and assurance of the Savior's love. Speak on temperance and on true religious um, uh, experience. You will thus learn much about how to work and will reach many hearts. Uh, and uh, leaving uh, counsel to teachers and parents and going to testimonies to the church, volume six, page 402, paragraph one. The people of God will recognize human government as only an ordinance of divine appointment and will teach obedience to it as a sacred duty within its legitimate sphere. But when it is claims conflict with the claims of God, the word of God must be recognized as above all human legislation. Thus saith the Lord, is not to be set aside for thus saith the church of the state. The crown of Christ is to be uplifted above the diadems of earthly potentates. And so we have it that um, the earthly governments have to be obeyed as far as the Lord has ordained them to be obeyed. But when they start defying the God of heaven and will make laws which interfere with the, the Christian obligation to his God, then uh, they are to be defied. And so the time will come when unguarded expressions of the Nindiotic character that have been carelessly spoken or written by our brethren will be used by our enemies to condemn us. This will not be used merely to condemn those who made the statements, but will be charged upon the whole body of Adventists. Our accusers will say that on such and such a day, one of our responsible men said thus and so against the administration of the laws of this government. Many will be astonished to see how many things have been cherished and remembered that will give point to the arguments of our adversaries. Many will be surprised to hear their words stained in a meaning that they did not intend them to have. Then let our workers be careful to speak guardedly at all times and under all circumstances. Let uh, all beware, lest by reckless expression, they bring on a time of trouble before the great crisis, which is to try men's souls. And this is uh, counsel to writers and editors, page 69. Uh, a Sunday law in Australia. A Sunday law in Australia. And then uh, we give uh, an uh, ex uh, extortion from the Bible. Uh, I'll read something from uh, E.G. White and then uh, I'll go to the Bible as uh, I finish. Um, Sunday laws in Australia, we are having interesting times for all in Australia. The pressure of the Sunday law has come and is coming. It has been ordered that all stores shall be closed on Sunday and this is being rigidly enforced. The government is trying to have God acknowledged in the constitution. Our people are making just as vigorous a stand as possible that it shall not be. They have been securing names to petition this effect. We can see that uh, that which we have been talking about for the last 35 years, this law causing the Sunday to be exalted and making human invention take the place of God's holiday is now being fulfilled. There is much excitement now in regard to these matters. And then uh, lastly from her, we read this. Um, Sanitarium, California, August 17, 1902. Dear brother, I'll try to answer your question as to what should you do in the case of Sunday laws being enforced. The light given me by the Lord at a time when we were expecting just such a crisis as you seem to be approaching was that when the people were moved by a power from beneath to enforce Sunday observance, Seventh-day Adventists were to show their wisdom by refraining from their ordinary work on the, that day, devoting it to missionary work. Now, uh, our last points 
on uh, on uh, the Christian obligation to the earthly governments. Um, in Ephesians 5.21, we are told that submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ, in everything let us think of what Christ will do and what is the love of Christ upon the matter. How shall be it spread among us those who are not even of our faith? John 18, 36, Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting that I might not be de delivered over to the Jewish, but my kingdom is not from this world. Our work is not to fight. Our work is to follow the example of Jesus Christ. In Philippians uh, 3.20, but our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we wait, await a savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And also in uh, Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Again in John chapter 19, um, John 19, verses 10 to 11. So Pilate said to him, you will not speak to me. Do you not know that I have authority to release you and authority to crucify you? Jesus answered him, you will have no authority over me at all unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, he who delivered me over to you has the greater sin. When uh, the three Hebrew worthies were arraigned before the king, they recorded he changes times and seasons. He removes kings and sets up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. But when they were uh, forced to bow down before the image, they said that we don't care about this matter when speaking to you. We will not bow to your image. And if God does not save us, just remember we have told you we will not. A reminder of Ephesians 1, 19 to 21, I pray that you will begin to understand the incredible greatness of his power for us who believe in him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's uh, right hand in the heaven realms. Now, he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else in this world or in the world to come. And so we can be sure that uh, our Lord will do some marvelous work for us if we only give our hearts to him. And so let no one look down upon you but uh, continue to be an example for the believers in your speech, behavior, love, faithfulness, and purity. These were the words of Paul uh, to Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. And uh, Peter finally says in 1 Peter chapter 5, 5 to 6, in the same way you are younger, in the same way you who are younger must accept the authority of the elders and of all all. And uh, all of you, dress yourself in humility as you relate to one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So humble yourself under the mighty power of God, and at the right time, he will lift you up in honor. Our work is not to fight. Our work is to walk in humility, in all kindness. And uh, when all those flags behind me comes against you, what you have to do is to kneel down to God and ask him of the wisdom on how you should relate to them. We are told that um, in, when we are brought before the councils to answer for our faith, let us not even take heed of what we shall speak because it will be the Father's Spirit speaking in us. And so as uh, we are about to enter the time of trouble as has never been, the little time of trouble and then uh, the great time of trouble, my prayer for me and my prayer for you is that uh, we will seek God in prayer and be obedient where it is uh, uh, good to be obedient and uh, where it will conflict with our goal, we will rather lose our life but be on the side of the Lord. May the Lord bless us and uh, may this Sabbath bring restoration to our lives, both uh, physical and spiritual. And uh, with those remarks, shall we pray in closing? Again, dear God, we come before you and your son to just say thank you because 
the Bible is a simplifier of all world problems, and it is a solution to all the problems we have. Help us not to seek any wisdom and solution out of your word, but Lord, inside your word, that we may get every comfort that we need for such a time as this. We pray for our leaders. We pray for the earthly governments. Be with your people. Make them pause and think of uh, even allowing them to exist, to exercise the authority they exercise. And for us, our duty, help us to accomplish it and not do it partially with partiality. Thank you for accepting us in thy son. For this we pray in his name. Amen. And so may we have a blessed Sabbath until next time. That is uh, on Monday when we continue with our late night presentation. God be with you and uh, bye for now.